Hello, my friends. We are almost back to having a normal setup for a little bit. Oh my God, aren't we so excited? We have not yet graduated to having a camera because for some reason my tripod is gone. If you're a frequent viewer of my channel, you know, shit happens here. Shit happens, okay? So that's all I gotta say about that. So we got my phone, but I do have my ring light again. Um, and I'm not wearing my contacts, so I can't really see you. <laughs> Okay, so today I just wanted to talk about all of the shows that I want to watch on Netflix because I don't have a job because my internship got canceled um, and I have a lot of free time. This is a great time to go and try to catch up on all of the Netflix shows you've been putting off, myself included, and so I just thought I would share the shows that I have on my list and then maybe in the description, no, the comments, yeah, I promise, I've been making videos for a while. In the comments, uh, why am I not signed in? Um, in the comment, in the comments, you can let me know um, what shows you recommend if they're not on this list. And yeah, we'll go through all of my to be watched and then at the end, I guess, I'll also do shows that I have watched that I recommend. So. Let's just scroll down. Here's my laptop. I'm sure you're all familiar with it at this point. I have to hold it very close to my face because I can't see anything. Uh, most of them are TV shows and not movies. So we're just gonna list literally everything. So first of all, I have Jeffrey Epstein, Filthy Rich. I think, is this a documentary? No, it's a limited series that is, this is a true crime kind of series looking into, I think like Epstein's life. I'm very interested in all of the things regarding like government, um, and societal corruption, um, societal things that are being hidden from us, the intelligence that I believe the powers that be have, especially considering all of the shockingly, um, what's the word, fascist? Yeah, I think that might be the word. Uh, all the things that are going on, I am really interested in making sure that I'm up to date and not just, you know, like absorbing the information that the powers that be want me to absorb. So then I've got History 101. It's just like um, a limited like docu-series that will have episodes that like the history of the space race, the history of McDonald's, the history of feminism, like just really short informative documentaries that I think is interesting. So there's that. You're gonna see I think a few more of these kind of like more informative documentary kind of things. I really like documentaries. So then we've got The Last Kingdom, which I literally just added because the trailer looked good. As Alfred the Great defends his kingdom from Norse invaders, Autred, born a Saxon but raised by Vikings, seems to claim his ancestral birthright. So I really like hi history. Um, literally, I'm sure the History 101 kind of informed you about that, but I'm really interested in that kind of stuff. So when I'm not looking at something that's exactly um, realistic. I like looking at um, like historical fiction, especially in television. Historical fiction is like my favorite shit. I love that so much. I want to watch the movie Inception just because that's one of those movies that everybody's seen it. I used to be kind of like starting to be a movie buff. I kind of would love to be a movie buff so I feel like I should associate myself with some of those more popular movies so that's why that's on there. We've got Outlander which kind of fits into the whole like medieval England kind of vibe that you're probably going to get from me here. I enjoy that. It's a book series um, and I have the first book, Outlander, that I plan to read and I figure because it's a really long book I would watch some of the TV series to see if I was interested in the book. And we've got Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. This is a movie that I know, I know, I know. I don't know how I haven't seen this movie and I don't know how I've known that I haven't seen this movie and still haven't seen it. Like, I am such a huge like Marvel fan. I don't, I don't know. Well, it came out and I couldn't go and see it in the theaters for whatever reason, I don't remember. And then it wasn't immediately on streaming platforms and I kind of forgot about it. So then I didn't watch it and then school happened and everybody had already seen it. And then it kept on coming up. People would be like, Alexa, you haven't seen this? This is such a great movie. This is such a great movie. I don't know. I just haven't seen it. I don't know what to say. My Quidditch team, they were going to arrange a special late night where we were going to watch Into the Spider-Verse because I hadn't seen it. But then, you know, we got all sent home like a week and a half after 
my teammate promised that so haven't seen it and I, I don't know now I want to watch it with somebody so I'm kind of I don't know I feel weird about watching it alone now <laughs> then we have sex education which has what's his fucking name um, Asa Butterfield, yeah. It looks like the kind of show that I'm either gonna think is really funny or I'm really gonna hate. I think the premise of it is this kid, Asa Butterfield, whatever his character's name is, his parents are like like an OBGYN or something or like sex therapist. I don't know, something to do with like all the sexy times and um, he starts like giving people like advice on that kind of stuff at school and then he like rises to the ranks of being like a sexual health counselor or something. So then let's move on. We've got... And with an E, that's the Netflix original based on Anne of Green Gables. I haven't read Anne of Green Gables. I have a lot of books that I want to read and usually I like to read the book before watching the adaptation. But I've been really hit, if you have been paying attention, with a lot of really terrible books. And honestly, I just want to save myself the time. And I know it's a beloved book, but I, I don't know. I need to see if I care about the story first. So yeah, there's that. Then we have The Flash. I actually have seen the first um, season and a half of The Flash. I really liked it. I don't know why I stopped watching it. I think it's because one of the characters like was annoying me or something. Jay Garrick, the new speedster. I don't know. I think he just annoyed me. I'm not exactly sure. I didn't like him. So I want to finish that on the same lines. Uh, I've got Arrow and Gotham. Oh, and Supergirl. I actually need to add those again because I deleted them, but Arrow and Gotham are two more. Pretend they're on this list just because I like superhero stuff, but I'm more into Marvel. So on Disney Plus, I have lists of like basically all the Marvel shows I want to watch. So the only one that I'm really compelled to watch is The Flash because I did like The Flash and I have no interest in Legends of Tomorrow, just so you know. Then we've got Disney's The Princess and the Frog just because I haven't seen it. Then we've got Patriot Act with Hassan Minaj. Is that how you say his name? Minaj? It's like a comedy series on politics and culture. To I really like funny people, so if he's funny that'll be great, but I also really like seeing politics from different perspectives. I don't think that it's a wise way to learn about the world to only watch one side of anything. So I like to consume, for instance, news media from the left, right, center, um, I've got Our Planet, which is just, it's like a docu-series on nature and our planet. I have a few of those on here as well. We've got Black Mirror. I'm sure you know what Black Mirror is, so that's on there. <laughs> we have The Crown, which is, I tried to watch this actually, I watched the first three episodes. It's about Queen Elizabeth, um, the current queen in England, and how she kind of like rose to be. It's like a historical fiction, kind of like retelling, because it's not fiction, because obviously some of these things that happen, but it's been dramatized, you know, for TV. Um, we've got The West Wing, a political drama series. The Dragon Prince, which is this really cute looking little cartoon, and I've really been watching like Avatar right now. I don't know, I just wanted to look at something a little bit more lighthearted, so I've got that on there. I have Night on Earth, which is another animal little docu-series. Oh, this looks so nice. Um, we have Avatar, we have She-Ra and the Princess of Power. Uh, I had never heard of She-Ra, but then my Quidditch team um, was watching it after we finished watching Avatar. And so I figured, I, I love everyone on the Quidditch team. I think that they all have really great taste and things. So I'll take a look at this as well. I have the Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. I've seen, I think, like four episodes of this. And I'm going to be honest, I couldn't stand it. It was really obnoxious, but that was a few years ago, so I figured I'd just try it again, and then if I don't like it, that's fine. We've got The Witcher, which I've seen the first three episodes of, and I really like The Witcher. I think it's so fun, except for it's one of those shows that I don't feel like I can binge watch, so I need to remind myself to sit down and just, like, watch a straight episode. I've got Dracula. It looks like it's got good production. It's supposed to be psychological, scary, and suspenseful. I feel like I would like that kind of television like the few series that I've seen that are sort of like that I've seen like as I said a little bit of the of the witcher I've seen oh, basically um all of supernatural that kind of thing so I want to get into that we have Versailles which is like historical drama lost in space which is like an alien sci-fi kind of thing we have Troy fall of a city following Paris I really like um ancient Greece and Rome as well we have the show spinning out is that a movie that's a show Spinning out, it's about, it's like a figure skating thing. And the only reason I added this to my list is there was this movie that I really loved when I was really little. It was called Ice Princess. I'll put a picture on the screen here. And 
it was like one of my favorite movies ever so this kind of just reminded me of that so i added that we have alias grace which is a tv adaptation netflix original um from the book alias grace by margaret atwood who's my favorite author um space force which i'm sure you've heard of that it was created and starring steve carell and it's kind of like a satirical look at the united states as space force i've seen the first two episodes of that and it's not a show that i can binge watch necessarily but i do enjoy it i have the series explained which just takes a look at you know different topics like the racial wealth gap and what else do we have monogamy k-pop designer dna i originally added this to my list for help with the book that i'm writing um because one of the um, episodes was helpful to me and i do like having things explained for me so it's remained on my list i have sabrina um the chilling adventures of sabrina so it's like sabrina the teenage witch but adapted sabrina the teenage witch was like my favorite show when i was little so i added this as soon as they made it but i just haven't gotten around to watching it yet i have the docuseries um trump and american dream for you know the political interests that i have i have taylor swift's reputation stadium tour just because i love taylor swift i have black hole apocalypse from nova nova was my favorite um series on pbs when i was little i used to watch nova all the time they had all of these great like scientific shows and I used to really want to be a scientist when I was little. Space especially is like my fucking shit. If I cared about physics, I would so be like an astronomer or something. But unfortunately, I don't care about physics. But still, I like to learn about it as much as I can from just like a normal person's perspective. So that's why I have that there. I have Netflix's Roman Empire. I've seen the series on Caligula and I really like it. It's like a it's like a documentary, but they insert actors there as well where it's kind of like a show not like oh we're talking over you and then there's just like a quick like reenactment scene but it's kind of like a drama but it's non-fiction it's i really like it. it's really good and then i have the rain which is six years after a brutal virus wipes up most of scandinavia's population two siblings join a band of young survivors seeking safety and answers so i picked this because one i thought it was pretty relevant to our current period in time i really have a fascination with scandinavia and um some of the themes i haven't seen the show yet so i'm not sure but some of the themes just from the quick look that i had look like perhaps they could influence the doing huh give me your life update down in the comments i'm very interested i actually am i actually am are you doing okay are you staying safe please stay safe if anyone was wondering the lipstick that i'm currently wearing is from dose of colors it's this one right here it's the color date night <gasps> okay let's go let's go okay so yeah i thought the rain might be a pretty decent um influence on the novel that i'm currently writing <laughs> Um, we've got House of Cards, which is my next series that I want to watch. I'm very excited to watch this one um, because political intrigue, that kind of thing. <clears throat> then we have Empire Games, which is a docu-series about just the various ancient empires we, we've had. So, you know, like we've got Aztecs, Rome, China, Egypt, Greece, and Rome again. And then I have the movie The Heartbreak Kid because I like Ben Stiller and I was bored and wanted to watch something. Those are all of the shows that are currently on my Netflix list. And then if I look at the continue watching list, I have The Office, which I'm always re-watching, and everything else is from my list. Um, let me know if there are any shows that you recommend. My favorite shows are sitcoms. I know that that's probably a little bit surprising because most of the shows that I talked about, oh, that 70s show needs to go back on my list. I had to renew like completely delete my Netflix subscription and then make a new one. So a lot of my old shows got deleted and I had to add them back later. But I really like sitcoms actually. My favorite shows are like The Office, Parks and Rec, The Good Place, and Friends. I don't like Seinfeld. Please do not recommend Seinfeld. I fucking hate Jerry Seinfeld and that show is not funny. <laughs> Brooklyn Nine-Nine is on my like mental list, but they don't have that on Netflix. So 
I'll watch that elsewhere. So let me know based on those shows if there are any sitcoms that you recommend. I do like Space Force but as I said it's not really one that I can sit down and binge watch like the other sitcoms that I mentioned so I'm always down for more sitcoms. Any other shows that I might recommend include um, The Handmaid's Tale. That's on Hulu and that is my favorite show. It is done so well and again it's based on a book by Margaret Atwood so I think the acting and all of the storytelling elements in that show are fantastic. I also really liked Stranger Things. Oh Jane the Virgin. I love Jane the Virgin. Leave some recommendations down in the comments and I hope that you enjoyed and let me know if you watch any of these shows. If you've seen any of them, what do you think? Hopefully we'll have a camera at some point. <sighs> I don't know. 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 Okay. Ciao. I haven't said that in a long time. Thank you.